Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks from Synapse Software, and in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about digital transformation. Specifically, why you should start your digital transformation with ITSM or ESM, IT Service Management or Enterprise Service Management. So, in my last video, I talked about what is digital transformation, and I'll leave that linked in the description below uh, if you want to check that out. But in this video, I want to go a little bit deeper and talk about how you might start your digital transformation. Because as, as we discussed, obviously digital transformation uh, is focused on the people, but ultimately it's using digital tools to help people do what they do. Now, most people understand their day-to-day -day jobs pretty, pretty well, right? Unless you're training someone, someone is operating in their job, they're doing it day in, day out, they understand that really well. They have found the tools that work for them. Even within small departments, teams usually find tools that work for them. Uh, and I definitely recommend doing some sort of, you know, periodic retrospective or discussion, you know, just to find out things that work well, things that don't work well. But that's something that can kind of organically happen within a team. As long as you promote the ability of a team to find the things that work for them, teams will find the things that work for them. Even within larger departments, if you get outside the team size and get into the department scale, uh, you can still find uh, tools that work for entire departments because in some cases each team might use their own tools and not really affect other people. Uh, or across the department, Teams might be able to agree on a tool that they can use and then they just use it. Uh, there's not much to do there. However, once you get outside the department level, that's when things start to get interesting and possibly contentious. Uh, usually, where there is the most friction in an organization, it's where you have multiple different workflows that don't exactly align with each other, but really have to in order for the efficient operation of the organization. And that's where ITSM and ESM come into play. Both of those fields are really well understood areas where a department is working with other departments. And in the case of ITSM, it's all departments. In the case of uh, ESM, depending on what area it is, HR, it might be everyone. You know, facilities, it might be more managers. It might be, you know, certain departments more than others. But in all of those situations, you have uh, a department or a team that the bulk of their time, 90% of their time, maybe even 100% of their time, they are working with other departments. And sort of by definition, it's a workflow that is totally different from what that other department is, is expecting and is doing on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? In the case of IT, a lot of times when you deal with IT, it's because something broke that's outside of the course of your normal day-to-day -day workflow. Uh, and that's why these processes are really, really well understood because companies have had significant friction in these areas for a long time. So in the interest of making that friction a little easier to bear and ideally go away entirely, there's an understanding of services. So every time a service is, is, is required, uh, there's this communication that's facilitated between the department or person that needs the service and the department or team that provides the service. And that's where service, manage service management comes from. So with that as a model, you can start to then see how other areas of your organization uh, can provide services to other departments. Let's take marketing, for instance, not a, a, a department you would normally think of when it comes to enterprise service management, but there is continually, uh, yes, let's, let's take, for example, a product driven organization, you know, like a, like a software company, marketing and product operate on very different timelines, right? Marketing might have uh, specific goals for, you know, the spring and, you know, the fourth quarter when you know everybody's starting to think about um, you know the holidays and stuff like that 
they want to ramp up on things or you know they might have a an annual conference you know October seems to be conference month so you might have a, an annual conference in October that you want to do some marketing for but at the same time the product team has their own workflow that they're going through maybe they have they also have the yearly cycle but they release in April or maybe every four months they're trying to get a release or maybe they they don't have a set release cadence and they just they want to release whatever but of course built when it comes to building a product just having the product isn't enough you do need marketing so maybe the product organization gets to a certain point they have a prototype they have something that they can start building marketing materials around and they start working with the marketing department and maybe there's been some friction there marketing feels like they're all of a sudden blindsided by a new new product well service management can come in and provide some way for the product team to say hey we have a new product we need to start building some marketing materials around that marketing can start putting together a timeline of okay over the next three months let's do these five activities so that we can have videos ready we can have uh, print ads ready we can have uh, our website updated you know various different things so that they can work with the the product team and have it all in a system where both departments can track it on an ongoing basis so there's no question of hey I haven't heard from the marketing team in two weeks are they just ignoring me or you know what are they doing and you can actually go in and see oh the marketing team actually doesn't need my input that's why they haven't uh, sent me anything they've been making videos and editing the videos and that stuff just takes time because they're doing that in addition to their their other workloads maybe there are multiple products being shipped at the same time so these sorts of systems can facilitate that communication so it's not necessarily the the particular example you might think of when you talk when you talk about ITSM or even the broader category of enterprise service management but it's still service management and it's still in a way that uh, provides a digital transformation that still achieves the the people oriented goals uh, that you're that you're trying to get so beyond that you can start to think about workflows that extend beyond just the interaction between two different departments you can start to think about uh, larger workflows across the company as a whole let's say your sales cycle right in the enterprise realm sales is a lot more than just one salesperson going out and, and closing a deal sales might involve a sales team it might involve you know an escalation if a particular customer has very specific requirements it might have to go up a few levels uh, to someone who can actually you know potentially sign off on on the company either doing additional development or um, you know putting something into their product roadmap for the next year five years whatever it might involve uh, something like a sales engineer uh, which would be responsible for like building demos and building out uh, something that shows off the capabilities of the product for the specific customer it might go to a finance team it might go to a legal team uh, for the contracts to to get signed and created and and all that sort of thing especially if you're dealing with uh, international things um, international regulations are changing it feels like almost daily so you need that additional level to, to to get through the process and then you might still need to involve other people in other areas of the organization and that's all before closing the sale as soon as you close the sale then you go into an operations phase you might have a professional services organization uh, that needs to actually build out the 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 offering that was sold um, not necessarily build the product hopefully you have that beforehand but uh, fitting it into what was expected based on what the sales engineer uh, put together and then you have the entire customer support aspect of it afterward now obviously this is all you know very much describing more of a software uh, scenario but you don't have to be a software company to have a very long involved workflow for uh, again our example was sales so 
that's kind of the next step beyond service management. So that's we start out with service management in these well-defined uh, areas, and then we go to service management in the less well-defined areas where it might be more organization specific. And then from there, we build on top of that and build these complex workflows. Complex might be not be the right term. It's sophisticated workflows that go all across the company and organize the company so that each department knows when it's time to play its part and they can do what they do best and not have to worry about knowing when it's their turn or that sort of thing. Uh, you can build out this tool so it just manages the whole process and everything goes seamlessly. And of course, the most important part of all of this is continuously improving. So you're never going to get it perfect right off the bat you are going to need to improve on top of that and have sort of an agile iteration process on top of your your digital transformation, your initial digital transformation. Digital transformation is not a single event and once you do it, you're done. Digital transformation is something that you continue to do as technology improves, as requirements change, as people change, as people gain a better understanding. Uh, you might find that what is the biggest pain point initially, uh, once you solve that, it uncovers a second pain point and now you need to solve for that. So there's this a whole process, but a great starting point is going with those very well-defined scenarios, well-defined problems with a tool that can solve those problems and carry you through the next five, ten, hopefully you know forever years uh, down the road and never lose that, that overall vision of enabling your employees, enabling the people that work for you. So that's kind of a long-winded ramble, but thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, if you missed the What is Digital Transformation video, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Share this video with your, your friends, colleagues, people in your company. Um, and if you really want to know more about digital transformation and see what a digital transformation could do for your company, go ahead and send us a message. Uh, you can leave us a comment below, send me an email, let me know what you want to see in future videos. I've got some technical, some non-technical like this. And of course, please subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when videos like this, and again, some of the technical ones, uh, get released. Thanks for watching and have a great day.